Hi everyone, welcome to Revival Recap. I am Seth Dahl here with Pastor Joaquin Evans, and we are gonna talk about Saturday night service. And we had Banning Liebscher from Jesus Culture as our guest speaker. So we're not talking to Joaquin about his message, we're getting his thoughts on what Banning shared with us. And I loved when you introduced him, wrapped up worship and said, this isn't just a message. Yeah. This is a prophetic word for us. Yes. So that's what I went into the message with in yeah. my heart. Is like, oh, he's going to prophesy over us. <laughs> and I'm he ready. did. And yeah. he did. The whole thing, he did. <laughs> and so I just love any more of your initial thoughts yeah. on that. Well, I mean, it's 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 that very thing. When I heard it, and of course, I got to I got to preview it before it, it aired on Saturday night. But when I started listening to it i was like my goodness he's he's speaking prophetically into our season speaking prophetically to us as a church this isn't just good information yeah which it was it was great content but i felt in my spirit like this is a prophetic word for us that that come away season that he was speaking into it was uh man i i got stirred and that that invitation from response uh from god and our response i'm like that is a defining statement and a defining uh, moment for us to embrace in this season. Yeah. yeah. Um, it reminded me, so when Jenna Winston was here mm. a few months ago, a couple months ago, oh. she you brought her up on stage. She had a word. She was like, I just saw God show me seven months from now, yeah. something is going to happen that's going to be radically yeah. shift this place. and. And then someone came up and was like, that's our two year anniversary. Yeah. Is that that seven month day. Yeah, exactly from when she gave that word, yeah. So it almost <laughs> feels like she gave that word like, hey, watch for seven months from now. And now Banning's like, hey, prepare for an encounter that radically yes. changes everything. Yes. Do you feel like those kind of two things are hand in hand? I do. I feel like those things go hand in hand. I feel like uh, God is awakening a hunger in his bride through this pandemic which obviously that's a that's a terrible scenario but yeah. god god can win with whatever scenario yeah he's still and i feel like that and i've and i've shared this so many different places uh but i feel like god's calling his bride to come out of this season more radiant and more beautiful you yeah. know that people god's calling people to press in to him in a greater way in this season than, than ever before. Yeah. And I really believe that the church has been shaken a bit at her foundation of what if, what am I building my life on? Yeah. The rock or sand. And I don't just mean, you know, are we saved going to heaven? But I mean, my daily walk with God, right? If yeah. I am, is, is just Sunday service been my source? You know, or am I connected to to God? Am I connected in the word? You know, to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, because yeah. those people who do uh, seem to be actually thriving in this scenario. And yeah. then those who don't, their foundations getting shaken. But the shaking is to wake us up so that yeah. we draw into that connection. So I think all those things go together. Yeah. I think that there's a, a move, this invitation that Banning was talking about. I feel like there's an invitation um, coming out of this season for the whole church, not yes, Bethel Austin, but the whole bride, yeah. you know, to respond to. So I think all those things go together. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, I'm going to go off notes for a minute, but he talked about Moses and the burning bush. And mm -hmm. one of the things it's like, wow, the burning bush was happening. The little shrubs burning. Moses turns aside. Then the encounter happens. But I, as I was listening to him talking, like Moses's encounter with God wasn't just an encounter for Moses; it was an encounter for his mm -hmm. nation. Mm -hmm. And as a church, like as I was listening, I thought, "Oh, God's not just inviting us, like, dude, my life got. I just had this encounter with God, and my life's different." Like, yes. no, He's trying to call. He's saying, "This is burning bush. Like, yes. there's a burst burning. There's yes. a nation that needs saved. Yes. There's countries that need saved." Yes. I feel like the <clears throat> invitation is almost like. This isn't just for us. Come this on. isn't just for Austin. This yeah. is for America. And Come on. What do you feel like? It's so true. And, you know, I mean, Moses' encounter, if you really if you really look at it and you draw back and 
I mean, it wasn't just for Moses. It was it was for uh, his people group, it's for nation. But really, it was for more than that. It's for generations. Even for us. We're talking yeah, about we're it right now. Thousands of years later. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's impacted us still. And you know, Banning went into the um, you know the Welsh revival, and you know my you know the most impacting for me personally part of that message was when he talked about the Welsh revival. You thought it started in whatever it was, 1904, but yeah. it started 10 years earlier when, when he was Evan, 16. He, when old, he was 16, yeah. and Evan Roberts responded to the invitation of God. So we look at it from history and go, well, the Welsh Revival. But when Evan Roberts was 16 and he was just responding to the invitation from God to encounter him at night in his bedroom, yeah. he didn't know there was going to be a Welsh Revival. Yeah. He didn't know that we would be talking about it over 100 years later yeah. in this interview. Like yeah. he just was a 16 year old kid responding yeah. to the intimacy of God. Wow. And so, so yeah, it, it can impact literally us right now, our city. Yeah. But if it's God, it can It'll impact go. generations and generations. I mean, you know, you mentioned Brownsville. People who, Brownsville impacted hundreds of thousands of people who went there, responded to altar calls, all that. But it impacted more than that, millions of people who never even went there. Yeah. But they've heard the stories. Yeah. They've seen the videos. Like I never got to go to Brownsville, yeah. but I've watched <laughs> hours of those videos and have been uh -huh. deeply impacted. And it goes on and on and on and on. Yeah. So I mean, whew, that's just how God works. That's you know, there really is no, <laughs> that's no what stop. We're, that's yeah. what we're being invited to yes. right now. Is that level? Yeah. My goodness. Um, yeah, the Brownsville. I was going to say. I he said Brownsville didn't. Brownsville started two years before yeah. before that, similar to Evan Roberts, 10 years before the Welsh yeah. Revival. And he talked about how John Kilpatrick, as the pastor, turned Sunday night service into a prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. What I learned, I had almost forgot this, but two, two years before Brownsville happened, there was a messianic rabbi visiting the church, preaching on communion. Mm -hmm. And he taught on communion and prophesied the entire Brownsville move. Yes. And John Kilpatrick said, from now on, we're taking communion every single week at these services. So he didn't just turn the, the mm -hmm. Sunday night into prayer. He turned it into we're communion. taking communion every mm -hmm. single week. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge part. And then that mm -hmm. Jewish rabbi came back during the revival and was like, wow, I prophesied this thing two years ago, yeah. two and a half years ago. And That's you so guys amazing. responded mm -hmm. to that prophetic word. And now look what's happening. Wow. Yeah. I mean, communion is connection. Communion is an invitation. We're talking about invitation yeah. and response, which was, you know, Banning's, Banning's message. But communion is an invitation into connection, intimacy, and remembrance. Yeah. Connection, yeah. intimacy, and remembrance. If you do that over and over again every week, yeah. let's see. Let's connection. have connection with God, uh -huh. intimacy with God, and remembrance of what He's done for us. Like, boom. But another thing about in that in that season, that two years before, that that sparked a hunger in John Kilpatrick, and obviously he was hungry before this time. He, you know, yeah. he's going after God. He was pastoring a church. You know, yeah. but it stirred a hunger. Where he would go to his church at night, he would get there about 11 30 midnight, and he would spend two hours just praying to God. But this, this cry rose up in his spirit, and he would say, God, there has to be more than this. Oh, man, I just get uh, Holy Ghost bumps. Um, and he'd been pastoring for years, but he was dissatisfied with just having church. Yeah. And this cry, God, there has to be more than this. And two years, he prayed that prayer. And I don't remember if it was every night, but it was multiple nights a week. He'd be in his church, in the sanctuary, their large, yeah. alone, yeah. praying, God, there has to be more than this. And he would talk about weeping this prayer, crying. And he would talk about being on the front row, no one else in the sanctuary, midnight, 12, 30, one o'clock in the morning, he'd be on the in the fetal position, on the just, front row, just crying, God, man. there has to be more than this. They would talk about the still small whisper. The still small whisper of God would answer him periodically in those crying out. He'd say, son, just keep pressing into me. Wow. You're going to find me. Wow. Whew, two Dude. years of that. And then we know 
you know, Father's Day would happen. God yeah. breaks Somebody. out and a revival. Father's Day is coming up. Revival right breaks out that, you know, that we're still talking about to this day. Yeah. You know, that's that's the invitation. That reminds me too. Bill Johnson yeah. would sneak into, put the kids in bed, go in and just worship Jesus yeah. on his keyboard yeah. for hours yeah. at night and yeah. then go to bed. Yep. For years in Weaverville, long before yep. Bethel, long before yep. that was that's yep. John Kilpatrick, Evan Roberts, Bill Johnson, and now yep. it's like what? A, yep. What's our yeah. RSVP? Here? Every Friday night, Bill would go into the sanctuary and play the play. play the piano, and worship, and Chris Valvin. I love Chris Valvin talks about they were really young, and yeah. Chris didn't even really know Bill at the time, but he would sneak into the sanctuary and hide and behind Tracy the pews. And Evans would break in to try to sleep. Remember, she was sleeping right. in the woods. Yeah. She would break in and try to sleep there, and this pastor would come in and worship Jesus. And that's how she actually got saved. It was wow. because she realized I'd forgotten he, that story. she's seen a yeah. real pastor. She's yeah. like, he'd come in and just worship God. She's like, something is different about yeah. this guy. Yeah. And now she's touching all Mozambique like Mozambique. Crazy. And Chris just would hide behind the pews and just watch him worship. And that whole, their lifetime of ministry together in that covenant relationship, that that bond was built in Chris's heart to wow. serve that man out of that, that, watching that, that. intimacy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Woo! I love, like, oh, I love this right now. Like, I feel like we could just talk and talk and talk. Bye, and talk. everybody. Yeah, I got to go get away with God. Yeah, we're going by ourselves. <laughs> see you later. We're RSVPing to our invitation. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go find our yeah. spot, like Banning talked about, yeah. our encounter spot. Um, I did have a couple quick things I think maybe we could hit. Um, one thing, and then we'll just wrap it up. A lot of us are parents. And I like, I hear this stuff. And so I actually grabbed my son and I said, hey, I want you to put in one of my headphones and listen to this. Mm -hmm. And I and I just, we listened to it together. We, um, I just held him and prayed. But as parents, what would you say, like, I know tons of parents, like every parent's dream is that our kids see the burning bush. Like wherever they're at in the wilderness, wherever they're like, I know I've talked to many parents, I'm like, hey mom, a burning bush is, is burning. Your kid's mm -hmm. going to see it like that bush is burning. What would you say we could do as parents to prepare our kids to mm -hmm. help them RSVP as well? Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I think the greatest thing is for them to see you responding. Wow. Uh, you know, I think that that's, that's the biggest thing. And then next to that is, you know, the consistency, you know, and what, whatever, whatever that is for, for each family, you know, uh, each parent, you know, praying over your kids at night, reading, reading the Bible to them, um, you know, <clears throat> praying together. What whatever that consistency is, yeah. Um, that's number two in that. Number one, I think, is them to see you responding. Yeah. You know, they, you know, in the morning or yeah. in the evening or like, you know, to them of, for them to for be them. the Chris Valentin, exactly. laying in bed hearing. Prayer, exactly. hearing worship, or exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm a night, I'm a night prayer, and a lot of people are are morning, but <clears throat> the evening time is like you know, it's the put your kids to bed, and so one of my favorite things is I'll be I'll be in the living room, I'll be spending time with God, and one of my kids will get up with the like you know whatever I want to drink water or you yeah. know whatever, and uh, <clears throat> but they'll come down the stairs. And there I am, not for show. I don't yeah. know they're getting up. It's yeah. not like, hey, what? Like, yeah. I'm just in my time and they stumble into my time yeah. watching me res respond. I think that is the most most yeah. valuable thing. Yeah, I have that same value. I'm more of a morning person. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a lot of times I'm there with my Bible and my kids come in. Like, I don't read the Bible in the morning, so my kids will see me read right. the Bible. But it's really good for them to see me read yeah, the Bible. Absolutely. I love that. Um, anything else you would say before we wrap up? Uh, you know, I just, I, I love Banning. I love, uh, his sense of humor. I, you know, I love his faithfulness, you know, and everybody wants to be, you know, at the highest level of impact and influence and, you know, but having, <clears throat> 
having watched banning for so many years and you know i was at bethel for almost 15 years and and uh you know so watching him grow from his role as a youth pastor at, at bethel reading that nobody outside the immediate circle at the church really knew uh, Jesus culture wasn't really a thing, the yeah. band, and, you know, he just, but he was faithful. He was yeah. faithful with responding to the invitation. Yeah. And I watched him, and he was, uh, as I mentioned in the interview, but he was the, um, the the leader when I went through secondary school of ministry, and, uh, and I, I just watched him. He would faithfully draw away to prayer, at t- you know, um, uh, I interviewed Banning, and, and that, that aired on the Thursday night before the, the message, you can go back and watch that, but he talks about time in the prayer chapel, yeah. early mornings in the prayer chapel. So that faithful responding, and now, you know, over the years, the youth group started to explode. Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus culture was, was really? literally the, the youth group band. And Chris Kilala was afraid to play in he was, front of the youth group. He was afraid to play. Kim was afraid of a lot of stuff, yeah. and she just blossomed and grew in her confidence, and you know, so Jesus culture, the band explodes, these youth conferences, wow. yeah. they start having start exploding, you know, it goes from, from just their church to the city, to the county, to the region, to nationally, people yeah. are coming, exploding, you know, the band's traveling, they got CDs that start coming out, they're exploding, next thing you know, you know, years later, they're, they're doing, filling stadiums in Chicago, but it all goes back to Benning as a youth pastor, responding to the invitation, spending hours in the prayer chapel. Yeah. The stadiums were filling many, many years before yeah. the stadium. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You think it started yeah. when Kim sang, Oh, How He Loves. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and Jesus culture came, blew up from there. Yeah. But it didn't. It started with Benning in the prayer chapel. And obviously, Kim has her own story, and she has amazing it- intimacy with God and Chris Kilala. But, but you know, it's it's it started five years before that with Banning yeah. showing up again and again at the prayer chapel and responding to that invitation from God. And that sort of brings me to I think the last thought of like, what can happen when a group of people. Yes. Respond to God's yes. invitation together. Yes. And that's what he was saying Woo. to us. What happens when us says Bethel Austin, not just Joaquin or Brene or me and Eddie and, and the team and the worship team, not just that. Yes, what happens God. when a whole church responds? Yes. What can what can become of this? That's it. Let's yeah. Let's do know. this together. Yeah. Let's just Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's respond. Let's go deep. Let's go into intimacy. I, yeah. I tell people all the time, more gets done in the presence of God than through our own efforts. Yeah. Like So Every we can time. try and create this move of God. We can try and be impactful. We can try and do all those things. But if we will trade our effort in that and instead sow it into intimacy with Him... All those things are going to explode, even exponentially, out of that. And we're like, "How did we My get gosh. here? How did how did we get to this place where this stadium is full?" Because we did. It wasn't about our effort. It wasn't about our 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 yeah. our, our ability. It was it was about Response. timing God, and He did it. He goes before us out of that place. I'm about to start preaching, I know. Uh, but <laughs> let's do it together. Let's go for it. Yeah. Come on. That's like Evan Roberts said. God bend me. And it bent the whole world. Oh! It bent the whole planet. And I feel like no. someone once, they asked somebody, they said, how do you start a movement? And they said, don't try to start a movement. Let God move you. Yeah. And that's that's where we're at. <laughs> God bend us, move us. We're in. We're in. I'm with you. Come on. Let's we're do with you. Yeah. Well, phew. I don't know what you're going to do after this, listening to this, watching this, like maybe pull your car over, have a little time in a parking lot, like Banning said, maybe go home, maybe maybe just put the kids in bed and just, yes, go respond to God. We're, we're all responding to God together yeah. for whatever it is that he's about to do. Yeah. You know, I just feel like, I don't know why I feel like I'm supposed to say this, but it's, it's, it's not even that. You watching, being with us as a leader, I feel like we're supposed to say, I'm supposed to say, I'm with you. Well, 
that you're you're dedicated to this, you're going after it. You know what? Your leaders are going to go after this with you. Yeah. So let's come on, let's do it together. I'm I'm with you. Come on. Whew. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Well, thank you for joining us for Revival Recap. Uh, amazing <laughs> time here. I like, whoa. I don't even know if this yeah, is a recap. This I is know. just a revival. This is revival. Yeah, <laughs> Thank exactly. you for joining we're us for revival. Just, we're, 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 having it. we're having it right now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my goodness. Yes. Wow. Oh. Thank you all. Bless you so <laughs> yeah. much for tuning in. I know. Stay tuned we in. Will, we will see you sometime soon. Yeah, stay tuned in. Tune us out. Tune God in yes. right now. Go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> see you. Bye. Bye.